Hello everybody, I'm Sidekit Ichigo Kimishiro Arclight, and today I thought I'd just bring you some real-time drawing. So, yeah. First, a little disclaimer, this is not going to be full real-time drawing. I'm going to probably kick it into speed mode sometimes, because if I was to make this entire drawing process real-time, it would be way too long, and it would also be kind of boring, because it would just be a lot of random rambling and I probably wouldn't know what to say, and it would just be me doing most of the thing, same thing. But anyway, I thought I'd just kind of, you know, do some real-time drawing and talk. I can uh, talk about my drawing process and how I've changed things pretty much. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so right here he's got a sketch. This is my character, Azura Shiraboshi, from the manga series, my manga series that I'm making, uh, Blue Song. Uh, when I say manga series, I mean it's probably never going to come into existence, but whatever, it's a story I work on. Let's just put it back. And, um, yeah, she's not a mermaid in that, she's a pop idol, but uh, she likes the ocean a lot, so I love drawing her as a mermaid a lot, because she looks adorable as one, and since it is ending with May, although I'm not sure if I'll get this drawing out before May ends, uh, um, I thought it would be nice to draw her as mermaids since a lot of people um, can draw mermaids for May for an event called Mermaid. And uh, yeah, it's a fun event. You can either draw a mermaid every single day of the month, which would kill me. Or, uh, you can draw, um, just a couple of mermaids. Um, I usually go for the route of a couple of mermaids, because, um, I, like I said, it would just probably kill me, because I can't draw detailed drawings every single day, and... Well, then if they weren't detailed, I wouldn't be able to do it. Although I am wanting to do this one challenge, although it'll probably never happen, is pick uh, 13 Vocaloids and uh, draw them every day and see how I do. But if I do do that, I won't be making speed paints of them because I will want to think. And I can't, I can never think I'm drawing and uh, making a speed paint at the same time. So that's why I only do speed paints of where I'm comfortable most of the time. A couple of times I have done speed paints of characters I'm not comfortable, like I from uh, You Give Reigns. I did a speed paint of him. And, um. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, let's see this letter. I did do a speed paint of him. Uh, and I'm never comfortable with drawing characters for the first time, let alone guys, because I'm not as good as guys as I am girls and so forth. But, I don't know, I, I think I did pretty good for it, but I, I do wish I kind of did better. Anyway, so what I'm doing now is just working in the line art. This little crappy thing is the sketch. Now, a lot of people uh, make, well, this is, a lot of people just consider this as like the guidelines, and then they make a top sketch where it's more detailed and it's almost like a secondary line art, but I'm lazy and I don't do that. So I just go in straight with the line art most of the time, although, like, with my last drawing, you saw me do a top layer sketch because that was more detailed, because I knew that this, that would be more of a, uh, 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 detailed drawing. Anyway, I had to check if I was recording the audio, because if I was not, I'd, I'd just cry. Anyway, so anyway, like I said, I'm, I was going to talk about, ugh, I do not like those at all. I'm going to draw the eyes first and see how that goes. Anyway, I was going to talk about how my style has changed. Uh, because I used to do a little, like, not tutorials, but just how I did it and showing the process. But I actually deleted some of those videos because, boy, has my style changed. Well, in some ways it has, in some ways, ever ways it hasn't. But, definitely since my first, uh, YouTube video, it's changed. Oh, man. I used to not like layers, and I used to, uh, 
like jumbo sized canvases like some of the I think something changed in people's eye and now they just don't like big canvases but even still like I used to use humongous canvases like 7,000 by 8,000 and it was just oh that was, that was too big that was too 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 big and um in addition to paint tool side no longer being able to hold support that size of a file um it's just really hard working on that big but uh also uh once i figured out how layers work and how they uh operate i actually overlaid you layers but then once i start w observing more of my senpais if you want to know who all my senpais are I will leave, I will uh, let you know down in the description below, although I won't do that on DeviantArt because I don't want to mention them because that would give them a notification and I don't want to bother them. But anyway, all my, uh, some of the senpais I can name off the top of my head, well, my art teacher I would consider probably Mark Curley, although I don't watch as much of his videos right now because I've just been lazy. But yeah, he's the one who got me back into art, especially drawing manga art. And I uh, love his videos. I love how he does a mix of manga and realism. And he's a really cool YouTuber. Anyway, uh, out of my anime manga senpais, they'll be like Yana Natsu and Nekurina and uh, Rosary, who's not, and uh, Kawasi. I'm not sure how you pronounce that probably butchered it and um squash john and uh, ever um such artists in fact i think we got a i see working project yep, 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 yep. this is a little style mean thing i got oh stop humming anyway these are my senpais rosary hanatsu nekarina isl that's me that's like my senpai uh, Rumu, Kawasi, Hentai, and Squad-chan. And then I also have a few more that are mentioned in my DeviantArt description. Those are the artists that I watch on different uh, Pixies and DeviantArt and YouTube if they got a YouTube channel. Um, and I uh, learn from observing their drawings. Anyway, what were we talking about? Layers. Layers, yeah. Anyway, from what I noticed of Hiana Natsu, uh, she actually doesn't use as many layers as I thought. I'm not sure about Nekarina, but Hiana Natsu. And although I still use more layers than she does, it definitely showed me that sometimes sometimes going simpler is actually better. Sometimes you don't need to always do the next best thing and make it bigger, brighter, and bolder every single time. Sometimes you can just do simple. Like certain, I always thought, oh, I need a layer because I need one layer to be set to luminosity. Yeah, as soon as I learned those effects, these guys, I just went overboard. But yeah, I was just like, I need to use luminosity and I need to use shade for the really dark parts. So I need to have more than one layer, but that was just like, yeah, I haven't gone to like, I haven't completely reverted back to my ever way, but it's kind of like, anytime I've noticed, and this goes for all humanity, not just me, but anytime humanity is involved in like, one thing, and then they learn, have the slightest idea that that thing might be wrong, they always then go to the far right, or the far left, and, um, they always could just completely going back the opposite way and then it's like like a good example would be like oh they go on a diet and they uh think that this certain food is bad but then they realize that that was a lie and that food was healthy and then they go completely back the opposite way so yeah a lot of people do that and i was no different like i used to use no layers i used to not want to have the trouble of layers at all well actually i was a really bad artist then so everything i said was pretty stupid i used to say that uh but anyway, um, and then, uh, I wanted to finish that topic before I get on to another topic, but, uh, then I totally went to a whole bunch of layers to wear so much that it made my computer run down. In fact, the one time I actually made paint tool size shut down because I was running it so much, and I feel sorry for it, uh, was when I was drawing this one drawing for I used to sell my senpai, and it's not even that good of a drawing anymore, but it had so many layers, and it was so big, and I just ran it down to the ground. It was a sad day. But anyway. So, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, uh, regressing. 
Oh yeah, uh, one thing I used to say is uh, tablet. I used to say, oh, it's not a necessity. Now, I'm still not a hardcore tablet person as much as ever people, although I do admit that I do use a tablet now. But I do think that you can make really good, you can achieve decent art with a mouse. It's just harder. And just, I think when people say, oh, you can't, I think it's just kind of, I'm going to try copying this and see what that does. I don't do that all the time, but sometimes it works. Anyway. Uh, like I said, I'm not hard, I'm not going to say a tablet doesn't help and it doesn't make things easier, but then again, a tablet just might not be your jam because uh, my friend Mayu Akawa, the one who I said used Clip Studio Paint, one reason why she likes Clip Studio Paint more is because she can use it with her mouse easier. She uses a tablet for like coloring and stuff, but she doesn't use it for uh, line art. And that's because it just works better for her with a mouse. So to say that you can't make art at all, and she does commissions, and she's a pretty uh, uh, liked among her communities, and I think she has cute art. Anyway, uh, she just uses what's easier for you, and I think that's what you should do too. But if you do get a tablet and you're not sure which one to get, you don't have to get a display tablet. That I definitely don't think. I mean, yeah, the display tablet's nice, and can be all that, but um, that said, I just use a Wacom Small Instance Black. It's not the cheapest of the cheap, but it is way more cheaper compared to a display tablet. Those things cost, are really expensive. But right now I don't have a job, so anything's going to be expensive to me, even this tablet, which is why I'm afraid that this one will break someday, because I don't know what to do. But I, I'll probably just try to get another one because there's no way I'm going back. I have a taste of power. Although I'm not sure if I'll get a welcome. One part of me thought of getting a Helion because a lot of people say good about them. But that said, I really don't want to waste my money so I might just have to go more expensive. Anyway, back to how my styles changed. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, it depends on if we're talking about how it's changed. It's definitely changed like a lot since I first did it since I first started doing speed paints, but um, that's better. Yeah, I should always draw the eyes first before I draw the eyebrows, because it shows you the way this. Anyway, um, I definitely recommend, um, what do I recommend? Oh my goodness, I forgot what I was talking about, and then when I go to edit this video, I will see what I was talking about, and then I'll call myself stupid. Oh yeah, yeah, stop changing. Phew! Anyway, I'm talking a little bit faster than I normally do, mainly because I don't want to ramble, and I figure if I talk fast that I will be able to not ramble as much. Although, even then, I'm still rambling. Oh, man. I'm not sure if my persona I've built up is endearing or not. Probably not. Little side rant. Um, I was watching an anime, and one anime girl was saying why am I so weird and okay in that anime she was uh, painfully shy and I get it I understand why a painfully shy person will think they're weird because uh, they're an introvert they're not going to see everybody else and if they do notice everybody else they'll just notice the extrovert people and notice how they can't do that and uh, just feel left out and that's why they'll think they're weird because they're just not like everybody else and I get that but to me I think a more accurate assumption of what a weird person is is someone who goes in between extroverted and um, introverted someone who doesn't know when to shut up like me uh, yeah I don't like talking to people I don't on average unless I'm comfortable with you and then when I do talk to you, a lot of times I never, sh I don't know how to interact, so I don't end up shutting up, and then I end up saying something stupid 90% of the times, and then I just desperately want the conversation to end, but instead of just ending it, I just continue to dig my grave. And to me, that's what a weird person is, but then again, that's kind of weird. I'm saying, oh, you're not weird, I'm weird. 
Anyway, I don't know why I went on that rant. It was just something that was on my head. Yep. <clears throat> I just noticed I didn't have a reference of Azura open, and usually I don't, like, have references. What am I talking about? Yeah, usually I do. Anyway, uh, I should get a reference up. Where are they? There they are. Yeah, this is what is- Stop humming! Yeah, I really wish I had a better system than this. I don't have a mic. I'm just talking about the mic that's built into my computer. And, um, XSplit is recording for me. And, yeah. And even if I did have a mic, the humming on my computer still wouldn't go away. Because... Because it's a pansy. Anyway, I just noticed we were 16 minutes in, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the line art and then I'm probably going to kick into speed mode. When I was uh, starting to get back into drawing, I never really thought of how weird speed mode is because I'm calling it speed up mode because I'm going to kick it up with the editing and just kind of speed through the process. But, uh, I'm not seeing that, I'm just drawing real time, and then I had to remember, oh wait, uh, when do I stop, talk, start talking again? I don't know, it's just something weirder to me. Well, actually, talking in videos are just kind of weird to me. Like, um, I've tried several times to make this, like, one rant video. I was going to make it while I do a speed fake, mainly so I could, uh, do it. It was just basically why is X was better, and I wrote a script for it so I don't go off on my random tangents and stay on track. Because if I was going to prove why is Excel is not, it's not better than GX 5Ds or DM. I think it is better though than Arc V and Brains, and that's what I was going to prove. But uh, yeah, I was just like, yeah, I those people who do those videos like that, they are amazing because I just can't. I mean, granted, not all of them are scripted, but. The ones who are scripted, like, uh, one YouTuber I go on is M and J. They're, they're amazing. They're able to keep their thoughts. I'm not sure if they're scripted or not. I imagine there's something scripted, but nonetheless, they are amazing because they're able to make that animation. They're able to type, talk about the show, and they're able to just, um, read the scripts good. Probably have plenty of practice on it. Again, like I said, I'm not sure if they're scripted, so I guess Alex Meyer would be a better example, because I know he is scripted. 90% positive, I think he said that. But, um, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's like almost no different than being an actor, and I'm not an actor by far. So, yeah, I give a lot of credit to YouTubers who can read a script and such. Okay, uh, the liner is like a little ficky, wicky, ficky, wicky, wicky. Anyway, we're almost 20 minutes in, and I've done nothing. But, uh, well, the last thing I wanted to say is about the line art. I think I went on tight range of just talking in videos. Ugh! Anyway, um, line art. Uh, one thing I used to use a lot is the pen tool. That was the very first tool I used. But then I started using the brush tool. And uh, now I still use the brush tool, although sometimes I will use this one pen. Uh, that I designed off of Hyanatsu. I based it off of the pens that she uses and such. So sometimes if I want to more follow her style, so that way for a learning experience, I'll use that brush. But most of the time I use the brush tool because I think it works fine for me. Uh, the one thing I would say about the pen tool is that the pen tool, I think, is a little bit more stable, while the brush tool is a little bit more smoother. I'm not sure if that's actually true. That's just what I noticed. And, um, yeah, the pen tool... I mean, the brush is a tool isn't that much less stable than the pen tool. And I got them set for the same stabilizer, in case you're wondering. But the pen tool isn't, like, that much to... Like, there isn't that much of a difference, so which is why I use the brush tool, because if there was that much of a difference, I wouldn't be able to use the brush tool, because like I said in one video, I think it was that paint tool size. I got, no, Clip Studio Paint one. I have very, 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 very shaky hands, so 
I need stability in my life or else I'll just go on a ramble. Anyway, uh, last thing before I go into time leap is uh, you can see this like very giant big hair holding thingy that keeps her hair in the back. Anyway, I don't do that while I'm drawing a Zorana Mermaid because I think it looks a little weird so I just draw her hair out like this but I still draw the side things. So anyway, we're gonna just get into time lapse now and I'll get uh, this on the roll.
Okay, so I'm done with the line art, and now I'm going to get into the coloring. Once again, I'm not going to be showing this all in real time because that would just be way too long. I would just start rambling, but I am going to try to show little parts of my coloring style. Uh, just like show a little bit of the eyes, a little bit of how I color skin, a little bit of how I color hair, and then I'll finish the drawing, and then I'll come back at the end and just kind of finish this drawing up. I mean, wrap the narration up. Anyway, uh, my mind's still a little bit flaky because it's early in the morning. <laughs> anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is add a base color. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm using a really bright color, in this case red, and I want it to be totally opposite of what's going to be in this drawing. I'm going to be having a lot of blue and aqua in this drawing, so I'm going for a color that's completely opposite of the color scheme. This helped me to really just, like, notice the color so that way I can see everything. Anyway, um, now I'm just going to push selection and I'm just going to start deleting everything. Also, I think I got, forgot to do certain parts of this drawing. Um, <clears throat> in the uh, time lapse part, so I apologize. Hopefully that won't be happening again though. Also, I am taking a moment to rejoice because my computer finally stopped humming, but now that I said that, it's probably going to start humming again. Especially since my dogs are acting like lunatics and they keep on making me push pause to attend to them. I made a lot of gaps in her hair just to like really show it moving in the water. And well, the thing about Azura's hair is uh, yep, there it goes. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, Azura's hair. Uh, the thing about Azura's hair is it's not completely straight. It's got, like, a little bit of a poof right here. So it's got a little bit of, like, some body to it. So it's not, like, arrow straight. But it's not, uh, as wavy as this. It's... I like to make it a little bit more wavier when she's a mermaid. Um mainly because I think it looks prettier and because we all know that mermaids can curl their hair with electric curling irons. Would, would it even be possible? I mean, like, I know there's an electric curling irons under there, but I know you can curl your hair without the need of an electric curling iron, so I'm wondering, is it even possible for a mermaid to curl their hair? I don't know. It's just something fun to think about. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, so I make it a little bit more wavier, and of course it doesn't have that back piece, so that makes it a little bit more out. Plus, also since she's underwater, I'm assuming, um, then, um, um, I can't think of the word! Oh, it's gonna be more just going all over the place. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this underwater or, uh, above water, but then I realized, oh wait, her hair's going all over the place, so it's really gotta be over, under the water, not above the water. So anyway, now that we got the base coat down, I think some people like also do this. I'm gonna switch to a different color, the green, where they'll go around the edges of their painting and then they'll fill it in, so that way they can make sure to get every single part. And I personally do agree that's a really good thing to do. But me personally, I'm just kind of uh, lazy. I don't take shortcuts in my art most of the time because I do understand that. I, uh, you know, to get better at art, you gotta take the long way, there is no shortcuts, you gotta take your time and all that stuff. And I definitely do agree with that philosophy, but at the same time, I'm still very lazy. I'm very lazy in my normal life, and it's something that shines true even in my artistic world. Although I do take my time in art more than I do in other things. So, uh, sometimes when I can take a shortcut and I don't feel like there's that much of a difference in quality, I will. But anyway. What we've got here now is uh, the base, and now I'm just going to start making the color layer settings. Okay, so I'm going to make a layer folder called Coloring Colors, and then I'm going to clip it to that. That way I can't color out the lines, because when it's not clipped... <laughs> it's not clipped, I'm going to switch to different color. It goes like that, but then when it's clipped, it... Uh, only shows up on the layer underneath, but I think a lot of people might already know that. Anyway, another thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making individual bases right now for each of them. I don't usually do that, mainly because 
I just color one thing at a time and I don't start on another thing until I um, go until I'm finished. I don't start on the next part until I'm finished and um, usually that uh, works for me but since I want to show a little part piece of each of my <laughs> since I want to show a little piece of everything that I'm drawing uh, tail, outfit, hair, skin, etc. I uh, <clears throat> I uh, wanted to change it up just slightly so that way you can see it. So I'm going to be making all these bases uh, right now. Again, like I said, this is something I usually don't do. Just because. Oh, also I'm going to make this rock disappear. I colored that and I actually don't want that to show up right now. So I'm going to erase the base of here so that way... I don't color on the rock. Also, uh, another thing I was thinking of, of things I don't normally do, I've changed in my uh, drawing techniques is uh, all the layers, all the line art is in one layer. Uh, I used to not do that. I used to have a layer for every single thing and uh, it was just like everything had to have a layer. Uh, the skin had, to, the body had to have a layer of line art, uh, the hair had to be on a separate layer of line art, the outfit had to be on a separate line art, sometimes the part of the hair, like in this case this drawing would have the loops on a separate part of line art, and uh, yeah, I just don't really feel the need to do that anymore. I always kept them on a separate line art in case I need to edit them, but now I think I've gotten to the point where I don't need to do that anymore, so I'm glad of that because I think it just saves more uh, time, well not time per se, but it saves more like um, space, yeah space is the word. Um, I'm not having problems with words these days, but uh, yeah that's one thing that's definitely changed. Uh, sometimes I don't use a folder, I've tried it, but uh, I usually still need a folder because sometimes I'll use that folder. I want the selection source to be for multiple things and sometimes I'll need an extra part of line art to act as a guide. It really does help. Also, I'm going to try to give you my general techniques of my coloring style. I'm just trying to talk right now so that way you have something to listen to while I'm doing this. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be trying to change up some... I'm going to be trying to follow uh, my basic pattern of drawing and coloring. Uh, the only problem is though that I will say is I always do change up my style a little bit. I'll always color my eyes a slightly different way. I'll always color my um, uh, hair a slightly different way. I'll always try something new once in a while because I'm like the problem is for me like I look at artists like Kyanatsu and Nekarina and their art is just like amazing and it really is cool. And I even look at my uh, best friend's Mayuakawa. She's it's really cool. She's got her own style, and you can recognize her art right away. I can recognize. I've seen a picture, some pictures of Hanatsu used in ads, which I'm not even sure if they were supposed to do that. But I've seen her picture used before on pop up ads, and I, I can always recognize it's hers. She's just got that style, and I think it's really cool. But at the same time, even if I was skilled enough to come up with my own style. I just wouldn't want to do the same thing all the time. I always want to change it up slightly. I always might want to try to do my eyes a different color. I always want to try to do my skin a different way. Now sometimes this isn't always true. Like Kyla, my ever OC. Now her, I did change up different ways of coloring her, but now I'm trying to stick to like this one way that I color her, or at least her eyes. I always try to make them like this weird kind of gradient. So that way she kind of always sticks out above the rest. But I also don't color anybody else's eyes that color. And I'm trying to sort of do the same thing with Zora too. But sometimes I, I just change because I want to try something different. And it's through all those experiments that I was able to get as good as I am. And um, I really think trying different things is um, a good way to um, get better. Like, I know some people will say, oh, no, stick to find your style and then stick to it. Well, I guess I still haven't just found my style, so I guess that's my problem there. 
which goes to show you how much of a noob I am still at certain things in art. I'm not an expert, I'm not good at teaching, but um, that said, I think that you also just need to, uh, there's nothing wrong with changing your style. I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool and stuff, but at the same time, uh, you're, you're not limited to it. I mean, if I was going by just one style, then I couldn't, I would never be good at anything else. I wouldn't be good at realism. I wouldn't be good, well, I'm not good at realism anyway, but I wouldn't be trying to do realism. I wouldn't be trying to do painting portraits. But at the same time, you should also spend time on working something if you're going to master it. So to me, I think there's got to be a balance. And um, a balance is basically what I'm trying to find. So yeah, this is what I was referring to, individual bases. I'm laying down them all at once. Like, usually I wouldn't be doing this. I would just go straight to coloring the hair, and then I would lay down the base for the skin. But like I said, I want to kind of show you a little bit of everything before I go into time lapse, or speed mode, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that way I can just really um, showcase a little bit of all my style. Um... <clears throat> throat always gets so clogged in the morning. I really need to figure out a way. I think there's like techniques that you can do. But anyway, I think out of all the things that are my least favorite color would be uh, the outfits on a character. Although hers will be a little bit more funner because of the seashell so I can put like textures on it because it's a hard sub. It's a hard surface. It's not like fabric. I really don't like coloring fabric most of the time. There's been a few dresses I've enjoyed it, but usually it's a little bit harder for me. I'm also not so good at uh, um, hair, but I do have fun with it sometimes, and I really love it when it's just coming along. And I'd probably say eyes are my favorite. They take the least amount of work for me, and uh, they are just really fun. But to me, eyes are like one of the most important part of a human being, and with a character as well. I mean, it tells you a lot about them and what kind of person they are and what they're feeling at the moment. Like right now I'm going for like a real, speaking of eyes, I think I forgot the layer. For... Oh wait, no, I labeled it outfit. Duh. I can't speak and write at the same time. So I was just trying to remember eyes things. But anyway, um, like in this picture, I'm trying to get for a little, a real innocent and soft look. And I think I'm accomplishing it. At least I hope I am. So that way, uh, she's, I don't know, she's got a real pretty pure look. And, um, like in this one, she looks really happy and, um, energetic and stuff. I wasn't sure what color to make her tail. I was going to make it the same sky blue, but I think in this drawing, it just would have blended too much. I was thinking about purple or pink, but, uh, those colors just really aren't Azura. She just seems like someone who would be born with a blue tail. So I decided to make it a darker blue, the same color as this dress. And uh, I showed it to my friend Lydia, uh, and she really liked it. So yeah, this was cool. This was a good idea. Um, <clears throat> I, um, the concept for this drawing, uh, well, I drew her once as a mermaid, mainly because I wanted to participate somewhat in mermaid. Uh, last year, and uh, I came up with this uh, mermaid um, concept, and I thought it was uh, really cool. But then later on, I started writing for myself, not for the general public. But I started writing this. Uh, oops, I drew that on the wrong way. I started uh, writing this. Uh, I don't want to say fan fiction story because it's not a fan fiction I'm using my own characters just this little uh, story was her as based on the little mermaid and my ever oc akira i think i forgot to mention that he's my ever oc when i showed the picture off but yeah i'm gonna fix up some of that because as you can see some of this goes over the skin so i'm just gonna erase right where I think it will be. I'm not an expert at this.
<laughs> I always do sheer parts of fabric last. It will go there um, when um, um, it won't be colored until I colored the background of the rock. But uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't do her ever hand. Also, I'm aware that the anatomy of this drawing is a little off. This is just something I rushed to do. In fact, it's actually traced off of the princess drawing that I drew her of. But uh, it's not cheating, it's recycling because it's my own artwork I traced and uh, I wanted to just draw something really fast. In fact, I wasn't even going to draw this, but I just really wanted to draw some real-time drawing and uh, this seemed like the best choice since it was already colored. Anyway, I'm going to make her seashells like this blue color, but I'm going to adjust it slightly. I never used these sliders at all, but uh, then I found out that they actually come pretty in handy, especially when you when you just want to move your uh, colors just a pinch, so that way you get um, just a slight difference. Which, like I've said for the millionth time, I got really shaky hands, so I can't. There's no such thing as a pinch. I'm gonna move it too far. So uh, yeah. I always go back and I always end up noticing little mistakes or little flaws in the line art or the face coloring and it always annoys me so much. For my uh, drawing that I drew last week, I'll link to that uh, uh, somewhere in a card or something. Ugh. And there's the computer humming. Okay, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, uh, was it the base color? I don't know, and I'm going to go back to editing this, and then I'm going to realize what I was talking about, and it will drive me so nuts. But anyway, like I said, I'm just kind of basing this off of her uh, pop idol outfit, because I think it really is uh, cute. I wasn't sure if starfish come in like a bluish-grayish color, but it turns out they actually do. So, yeah, I'm making her starfish silver because her last name, Shiraboshi, means silver star. Well, it actually means white star now that I'm thinking of it, so maybe I should make her white. But she, she really likes silver. She doesn't like, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna make it white. It looks pretty white. But, um, she, uh, really likes silver. She's not really a gold type. And last time I made her tail, it was, uh, gold. I mean, her starfish. Her uh, tail was uh, blue. So I'm just going around like this, completely out of the lines. So that way, it's easier to just do that. Of course, I'm just kind of erasing the parts. But then I'm realizing that the tail wasn't colored right there, so I'm just going to fix that. And then, boop, bloop, 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 bloop. Ugh, coloring beads are, well, drawing beads in general, they're always a pain. I think the most beads I've ever done was in my Indian magic drawing, which I think I'm going to do a redo of that because it really is good, but I think I can do so much better. So I think I'm going to draw that again. I think I'll really enjoy that. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, now we got the base color down, and I've got to say, once again, I'm really loving how, <clears throat> how this drawing is uh, coming along. Wait, I forgot a finger else. Uh, it might be an overdue of blue, but uh, blue is my favorite color, and it's also her favorite color, so blue it is. The name of my, the series that I made her for, which I will never probably finish or release is called Blue Song. Uh, mainly because I couldn't uh, think of any of her name. And um, now we are done with the base color. 
Okay, I'm mostly going to be sticking with Painful Sigh for this drawing, but I might open up Clip once, but I'm not sure at the moment. So if I don't open up Clip, it's because I changed my mind. But anyway, next I'm just basically going to do the exact same thing I did with the colors, how it's all clipped to that layer. Uh, each um, color right here will be clipped to its base color. Now, sometimes I, I used to label every single layer, but now I just do the primary layers and ignore the uh, every single detail layer. But for this drawing, since I'm going to have so many layers open, I might uh, label more. I know a lot of people probably don't, and I guess I understand why. It kind of comes off as a waste of time. And yeah, it, it is time consuming, I won't lie. Which is why I don't do it as much anymore. But at the same time, I uh, still find it handy once in a while because I do get layers mixed up and I forget, oh wait, what's this one, what's that? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, what I'm doing right now is I got so caught up I forgot to tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just laying down a very light gradient and if it comes too dark, I might even lower the opacity a little bit more because I definitely don't want this too dark. But what this does is I think it helps the color just naturally flow into it so that way, like in this one, the highlights and the difference between the base and then the shadows, it's very harsh and you can see a very sharp line. And yeah, I like that, but in that style I'm going more for like, um, well it's all anime style, but I'm going for more like if it was from an anime, so a little bit more <clears throat> not cell shaded because I think it's got a little too much color in it to be considered cell, but uh, it's got a little bit more of a straight, of a smooth, like flatter look. And not all anime has that, but a lot of animes do. Um, this one I'm kind of going for like a mix, so I'm kind of having like, like I said, a little bit of a gradient. And I just realized I put a gradient like right here. Uh, I also added this at the top. This really does help. I don't do it all the time, but there are times even when I'm not recording videos, I will uh, put that there. It just kind of gives me an idea of where the uh, sun is or the light source, so that way I'll be able to remember which way to draw the shadows. Because sometimes I have done that. I've gotten them uh, wrong and it's annoying. But anyway. Now that I'm done with the base coat, I'm going to start speeding things up now, but uh, I'm not going to go quite in time lapse quite soon. Uh, I'm going to get the next color, which I just realized I don't have down. I only have this darker color. What the flying? I knew that was too dark. Okay. Uh, Apparently I have more colors on here than I actually do in my color picker. Uh, I was just going to say that doing that is a lot easier because then you don't have to have them all up here, but it doesn't work because I don't have them all there. But yeah, that is significantly darker. I I gotta fix that. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to be using this color now, and I'm just going to be going... Well, actually no, I'm going to use... Uh, this one because this gradient is pretty um, pale. I'm just gonna be going like that. And uh, I'm using a pen but the edge isn't the sharpest and it's also on a dirt texture that way it's just more smoother. And then basically I just go like that. I add the shadows and I'm going really light right here because like I said the sun is shining at the top of her head. So this is where the shadows will be the lightest. And uh, another thing, and I'm sure you've heard it if you've watched any drawing videos, is another tip for drawing hair is you draw in the direction that your hair is going. I looked at references, real references, anime references, and I've even looked at my own head. I just kind of put my hand up there and besides noticing it's really messy and tangled and kind of got a similar part to Nez's ago, um, it's uh, really... Uh, 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 it, it just gives me a feel for where the hair goes. But anyway, I just put the shadows where I believe that uh, it would be the darkest. Like here, the sun's coming from like at the top. So the shadows to me would be right on this side and a little bit underneath. 
So that's basically what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah, I think it really does help. And by putting, picking this more lighter color, it just helps it like go more into a smoother transition between the darker colors and the lighter colors. Whistle. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I just said whistle. Uh, my dog is whistling out of his nose and it looks so cute. I hope he's not having a nightmare though. Sometimes I heard dogs do that when they have nightmares or at least vivid dreams. Anyway. So yeah, you kind of get the idea, and then uh, I'm going to stop right now, but I'm going to and go on to the next step, and then I'll go on from there. But then like I just go for the harsher shadows where it's going to be really dark, like right here is where the least sun is, and it's going to be like more darker, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower the opacity a little bit so that way it's not that uh, dark. And um, yeah. But definitely getting a feel for how hair works and how it splits on the fore top of the head. I think it's the crown, I'm not sure. But it definitely uh, helps because it gives you a feeling of how real uh, hair works. And such. And it makes your drawing look like it's got a lot of depth. Like to me that's got, that's got a lot of depth right there. And then you just go on. And it's pretty much like that. But I am going to show you briefly how I do the highlights. Although I'm going to erase that because if I have that there while I'm doing the speed paint, I'm going to be messed up. Now, sometimes I do just a sharp bar across. But sometimes I just do like a thin gradient. And I'll put it like on luminosity. No, wait, not luminosity. Screen. Yeah. And then I'll start making the sharper ones. But sometimes, like I said, I do that... Uh, just straight uh, bar across but in this case I'm probably gonna do it like this and I'm actually gonna put this one on luminosity so that way it shows up more and then the final trick that I do I don't do this all the time on hair but I do it quite often is I'll just take it the skin color and put a little bit of skin color right here on the hair I've seen a lot of artists uh, do that I think it really does help with just kind of adding a little bit of color to your drawing and I think it personally looks nice so uh yeah that can pretty much what sum up what I do with my hair like sometimes when I want it to be really dark I'll add like shade or multiply to it one of those layers but at the same time I'm also just kind of doing it a little bit more differently now the skin I am going to show how to do but I will be honest I actually use um clipping now more to do the skin because I like the airbrush but like I said I'm pretty much going to stick to mostly uh, um, paint tool side because I don't want my computer to start humming like a maniac and it's already been doing it quite often but anyway I'm just yeah There we go. Just making sure I use my color. Anyway, uh, I'm first just doing pretty much the same thing I did with the skin. I'm making a really smooth gradient, and then like later on, I'll start making sharper lines. But the gradient just really helps me uh, get more of a slower transitioning to everything. Really, just makes it like melt right into it. And the skin is pretty much just like the hair. It's just that I don't. I don't add as much luminosity. The luminosity is mostly like on the edges. Like you can't see it on this drawing, but I can go. Don't overload. Yeah, like going right here, I've got a little bit of luminosity for like the lips and then some shine at the cheeks and at the very rim of this part because that's where the most light is. But mostly I don't need luminosity. But other than that, it's pretty much like the hair. I just do like a soft gradient and then I'll do a uh, dark tone after dark tone and the darkest parts of the shadows will be like right where uh, I know it's going to be dark like right here I know it's going to be really dark so I'm going to add some heavy shadows there 
And then like right here, it's going to be pretty dark, so I'll add some heavy shadows here and under here. And um, adding some shadows here. And yeah, that's pretty much what I can say this is the skin color. I'm also going to save what I'm going to do for that. I'm not really going to go into it that much more because I don't want. Now the eyes. Okay, I'm actually, as much as I don't want my computer to over run, uh, I'm going to open up, uh, which file is it in? You can't see me, but I'm opening up, I'm looking for a file on my computer. Here it is. Now this is my eyes. Uh, I don't actually color in most of these ways, but these are basically eyes that I, and are the names, uh, I uh, color in. This used to be my main one, this one right here, but uh, and this way, I don't, it, I do it better now, but this is how I color Kyla's eye, so I keep that there. And then this is one way I color eyes. This one is based off the Squatch Arms, which is why it's called that. And this is one I came up with, uh, it's called Ray because it's based off a drawing of Ray Akaba. I saw, and it's kind of got a real spacey theme to it. And then this one, which is called Kalala, which is based on Kalala Princess. So those are just like the different ways that I can color eyes, but uh, this way I'm going to go for a more smooth um, edge, like I'm going to be making a lot more, not smooth edge, sharp edge um, anime style. Um, I also realized I forgot to do white, so I'm going to do that real quick. And for uh, the whites of the eyes, I uh, sometimes will just draw uh, like a grayish blue for the shadow, but for Azura, I like to do, and some of her characters, I like to do the shadow color, like a little bit of a tint, so that way it makes it look like the eyes are glowing. Uh, one handy trick of when you're coloring eyes is first make sure all of your skin's colored. Anyway, uh, is uh, you make it a bright red color or something that will really show. So, and that way you can really tell if it is uh, straight. So I'm going for this light, really bold color and it looks freaky. But then I'm just going to, and you won't be able to see this because I just realized Paint Tool Slide doesn't do it, but what I'm doing is going to the hue and saturation section and I'm just lowering the luminosity up to 100%. Well, actually, I'm going back uh, and change this actually to purple. And I'm going to lower it a little less than that because I don't want it like the brightest bright white. Like some people have it like really much more darker than I do. But I don't like it like pitch black, but I do like it a little bit not so it's bright and white. And there we go. And that's pretty much how I do the whites. Now I'm only going to be coloring one eye. I'm going to do it pretty fast. Because like I said, my eyes are what I change up the most. Because I am always looking at other people's art and seeing how they color eyes. And I'm always like just drawn to drawing them different ways each and every time. So I've got like no set way and I don't know I feel kind of bad about it but at the same time I'm just like it's cool. Whatever. Okay so I'm gonna go back to the color palette because the eye color palette I do know is right. And I'm gonna go to this uh, darker color and I'm just gonna color the entire eye. And then I'm going to erase the parts that I know. Are. Are. Uh not going to be shown. My mind went blank there for a minute. 
And I said I'm going to do one eye, but I ended up doing both. One second. Okay, uh, apologies. I kind of made a quick guide because I didn't know what I was doing. Which happens a lot in my line. But uh, this time I'm making all of the colors on one layer. I don't normally do that. Uh, but uh, this time I am because I just want a really flat... Uh, well, I said all in one layer, but I did that uh, two layer thing. So it's not completely all in one layer, but uh, it's uh, pretty close to being all in one layer. Like I said, sometimes I just use like a buttload of layers, especially for the eyes, because I just want them to look really um, shiny or perfect. And um, then get the darkest of the dark color, make it on, and then light. And I forgot to record that. I apologize, uh, but basically what I did is what you see. I did very smooth uh, straight cut lines, and then I uh, used luminosity right here for the ever eye. But uh, yeah, I didn't do it for this, and I'm probably just going to... I was going to do it for each eye. Now, normally I don't do this. But I'm a little bit lazy on this drawing, so I'm just going to copy and paste. Now, I don't do this all the time, and most of the time, I just follow the steps. But, like I said, I'm a little lazy for this drawing, and it's looking a little weird with just one of her eyes colored. Now, the problem is with the Psy Transform tool is that if you don't do it right, it gets very pixely. So which is why I definitely don't recommend the copy and paste of the eyes more than once. Because it can get really uh, pixely. And just kind of wonky. Like, obviously, if the eye was really more detailed, I wouldn't be doing that. And I'm actually going to collapse this layer because I'm pretty much done with the eyes. I got the highlights to do, but that I do above the line art like this. You just make another layer, then this one I'm going to label. Because if I have a la not labeled, I'll probably delete that instead of the sun. And then you just go like that. And there she is, also cute. Very moly. And sometimes I add a little bit of highlight in the center of the eye, like right there. And I think I'll do that at the very end. But, uh, first I just want to go on to the, uh, outfit. I'm going to save the tail for last because that's another thing in itself. But, uh, let's go on to the outfit. Now, the outfits are the most hardest for me. But this one will be a little bit different because it's not, um... I just realized her shoulder. So I'm done. Burp, burp, burp. But uh, the um, this outfit will be a little bit easier because this is a seashell. It's hard, so it's got a lot of hard substance to it. So it's got a lot less folds to it. So yeah, drawing fabric with a lot of folds like this. That it's just always been a little bit more difficult for me. I don't know why it's I'm not completely a moron at it but it's not something I'm an expert at like sometimes I do better like this one you know the dawn picture I made in fact I, I made a speed paint of it so I think I'll link that um I don't know I'm not sure if it does it will appear in a card uh, in the corner of the screen, but um, that one I did really good on the folds, but half of the reason why I did so good is because I was looking at reference, lots of reference while I drew, draw, and then I was also um, 
using uh, very sharp tools like the liner tool. Like sometimes what I'll do, and this is why I have it in a folder, is I'll have uh, this tool and then I'll get the liner tool and I'll use that to kind of make a guide for me. Wait, I didn't use them. I used the step tool. I need to use the curve one. And I'll use that to make a guide for me and then I'll just bucket fill it like that. And a lot of times that does work, but at the same time, as you can see, it's not the smoothest. It's not as organic quite. I mean, like, that's the biggest problem is when you're drawing with a mouse and you're not experienced is it doesn't turn out to be quite as organic, I think. But it does help me get the lines just the way I want. And sometimes when I'm in a rush, I do that. And sometimes even when I'm not in a rush and I just uh, want to get it really right, I'll do it and then like I'll smooth it out. But uh, yeah, this is basically how I do it. It's pretty much the same thing for everything. I draw like with the, not the darkest color, but then just like the second darkest color. And sometimes I'll lighten it up, sometimes I'll darken it up, and then I'll just pretty much have to be the judge of where the shadows are. I think that's like the hardest thing and a first step of becoming an artist is knowing where the light source is. I'm still not an expert at it by far, but at the same time I've gotten way better at it than I started out. And I've been drawing digitally for three years, and I've been drawing traditionally off and on since I was a child. And so I've gotten pretty much the hang of it. Well, not the hang of it, but I, I've gotten a feel for it. Let's put it that way. Anyway, the tail. Uh, okay, so the tail is going to be the hardest thing. I'll, I didn't show how I draw some of the pearls. The beads, like sometimes I make them like really detailed like that, which I based up to Nick Arena's uh, coloring design only I uh, put my own twist on it but uh, the pearls uh, these are just normal pearls so I'm probably just gonna do it like this get like a tannish pinky color just so I can add some colors so it's not all blue and then I'll just go like that and pretty much like that but I'll add some more sharper lines later on I'll explain when I'm done I apologize that this isn't a completely narrative tutorial but like at the same time I said I'm a bad teacher and I can't I can't teach all the way through it's just it's not me but uh, I'm noticing some flaws in the line art and um yeah um okay so the tail I don't draw tails all the time so I have actually no idea what I'm gonna really do usually I like to in fact, for this one, I probably won't show anything. I'll just open up some reference first and save this. So that way. Okay, so I opened up this drawing, and this is the first mermaid I did, and it's horrible. And it's just a smooth gradient, and it's got nothing. And I think I traced some of this drawing. Well, not entirely. I, I drew something myself, but a lot of it is traced. And then this is the second one I did, and I was actually a lot more happy with this. Mainly with the hair. And I can see why I would have been happy with it. It's got more colors to it. But I didn't have a tablet then. I used my mouse to do it. And boy, does it show. Uh, it doesn't look right. I also did like that seashell thing. Or this, I mean, that seashell scale thing where it's just there. I'm not sure if I like that, to be honest. But it looks cool. But anyway, then the next time I drew a mermaid was... Well, not in two of my blue song drawing I think. I don't draw mermaids actually that much. I like them. They're my favorite mythological creature but I, I don't draw them that much. But yeah for this one I did a lot more texture. Uh, as you can see I've got like some dirt texture which is this right here. I'm gonna open up the swatch pad so you can see it. Um, turn this more to and uh, you can't see that. Uh, oh here we go like that and you can see like a little bit of texture in it and then I also use this glass texture um, which is right here I think it's this one yeah I use the glass texture and the secondary glass texture and that really helped me get a lot of well texture to my tail but even this is a little too smooth for me like that there's no depth of shadows. I think it was rushing towards the end, like I usually do. It's usually when I get the most lazy for my drawings. 
But that's pretty much what I did the starfish and the shell for. And even the seashells. I'm probably going to do that again here. Is just kind of like add some. Hmm, I need the beads silver. I'm not sure if I'll do that. Anyway, I'm digressing. But yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do here. I look at a lot of reference for like uh, a Bermuda Triangle cards from Carve Vanguard. Because those are a lot of mermaids. And they're all cute. But uh, yeah, that's basically how I do things. I'm sorry if that wasn't really that in depth but i hope this was a little helpful to you or if you just enjoyed this for entertainment and you enjoyed me spazzing but anyway i'm gonna kick it into time mode now and uh i'll be back at the end to just finish off my final thoughts
Okay, so with that, we are finally done with this drawing, and I gotta say, I really do like how it turned out. I think she looks really cute, and it's not too much, and it's uh, nice and simple, it's not overdone. I was probably gonna do, like, background or something, but then in the end I just said, nope. I still can't tell if she's underwater or above water, probably above water, even though I said I was going to do underwater. So I guess her hair is just blowing in the wind or something. I also was just going to like shade her tail like I did last time, but instead I did this like scale pattern. I first was going to use this like uh, template that I got off of Google, but then I was like, I can do this myself. So I just made some circles and stuff and well, you saw it. And I gotta say, I really do like how it turned out. I think we got the drawing a uh, nice uh, detail and stuff. And uh, yeah. And anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. I think, like I said, I think it turned out really well, and I'm really glad that you uh, watched it all the way through, if you're still here. And uh, I'll hopefully be back with another one. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching!